welcome to our Matt Yoga series, Around the Brome Home, The Greenhouse Effect. As the pandemic prolongs, as we are continuing to quarantine, uh, we want to think about self-care today and thinking about taking care of ourselves and how can we uh, best manage uh, this experience and, and life in general, right? And one thing we can do is take care of ourselves and incorporate our yoga into our, our daily life. So I hope you enjoy this series. Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing you bits and pieces around my house. This is my side yard, and uh, it's where uh, Scott keeps some boats, and uh, we're, I'm looking at my screen-in porch and um, the back of my garage as we get this angle uh, today. So welcome, and please uh, join me as we get ready to breathe. We'll begin today with breathing. We're going to try elevator breath again, and I want to do some thinking about elevator breath today because when I introduced it in our chair yoga on the beach, I described as the breath in, the elevator goes down, and on the exhale, the elevator goes up because on the inhale, you expand the belly with breath, the elevator goes down to the belly and fills up, and then as you exhale, your elevator lifts, right? When I described it when we were doing the third session of Camp Compassion or Compassion Camp BBS, I did it the opposite way because I had some discussion with family members at the Brome home and they felt, no, the elevator lifts on the breath in and on the exhale, you let the elevator down. So however you want to visualize it is the right way to do it, but you want to think of the breath going in and out of the body just like an elevator goes up and down. So you're welcome today to begin standing on your mat or you can be seated on your mat. And of course, if you prefer chair yoga, you can make things that work for you sitting in the chair. So just make yourself, uh, or make this workout work for you. Make it be the yoga that you need because every day, every day is different and what your body can do one day, it may not feel up to it the next day or it may feel like doing more. And but don't judge it. Whatever you could do and now you can or whatever, you can, don't judge it. Just observe and enjoy. Enjoy being in the body that you have this day. Uh, thanks be to God. All right, so we'll begin with a big breath. We'll start with our elevated breathing. Breath in and breath out. Inhale. your elevator going up and down or down and up just make it work for you that the big breath is going in the body and out the body Take some side stretches. So hand to the side body as you reach up and over, expanding the chest and loosening um, the side meat of you. All right, today's theme is going to be thinking about taking care and self care, uh, taking care of yourself today. Uh, as we continue the pandemic, as, as we just continue day to day, we've got to do the things that we need to do to care for ourselves. So the first thing we'll do is begin to stretch our spine, knowing that we should stretch it seven ways. All right, reach both hands high. This was the second way. We've done a, a side bend in one direction, an extension, and now a side bend in the opposite direction. Breath in, breath out. So seven ways to stretch the spine, and one of the ways we can take care of ourselves is incorporating our yoga regularly into our schedule so that we get those stretches for the spine because we want to use it so we don't lose it, right? All right, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's go up to the top of the mat and breathe the wings up and exhale them down. Four good breaths, breathing the wings up and exhale them down. And then one five more, breathe them up. Exhale down this time, palms together, thumbs to the heart, and roll down into your first forward fold, okay? All right, 
so um, if you are seated on the mat, just keep uh, holding over those uh, legs because we're coming down to join you. We're going to plant the hands. So as you see, I'm bending those knees to really reach lower to get to the mat. And I'm going to walk back and find a table position. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips. And from table position, I'm going to roll through some cats and some cows. So breath in, arms out. And exhale, roll the back up to the sky or the chest. So there's two more ways to stretch the back. By bending from the back forward and back. Breath in on the cow. And exhale on the cat. All right, one more breath in and out. And then we'll come to neutral spine, and we'll work our um, tiger pose, or um, we've also called this a box. Uh, no one likes to think about it that way. So we'll stretch one arm forward, right, and one leg back. Opposite way. All right. And then we're going to grab a little bit of the air, right, tickle, tickle, tickle on each uh, side of you, and then bring the knee and the elbow together. Reach and stretch. Exhale, pull it in and touch, or just in that general direction. Breathe in and stretch, and exhale, touch. One more time. Breathe in and stretch, and exhale, tickle, tickle. All right. Knee and hand return to the mat, and we'll try that fun on the other side. So first, you extend a hand, and if that feels pretty good and comfortable, then you can just stretch and strengthen the leg. Welcome to Wobble. That's you getting stronger. Breath in. All right, grab a little bit of that air and then pull it together. On the exhale, breathe in, stretch, lengthen, exhale. Breathe in and stretch. Breathe in and stretch. Come back, knees under hips and hands under shoulders, and roll through a couple more cat's cows. Breath in. Breath out. Breath in. And breath out. All right, neutral spine. Take your toes into the mat and take your hips high for a down dog. All right, now keep the knees um, soft. So never lock out the knees. And then um, I have loosey-goosey shoulders, so I have to really concentrate on not letting it all go and get too much stuff in the shoulders as well. So concentrate and work this down dog how you need to work it. And we'll extend the leg for a three-legged dog. And then we'll work a cheetah by pulling the knee into the toe. Ha! Extension. And pull it in. Ha! Extend. And pull it in. Ha! And then we'll retrace that foot and get that work done on the other side of the body. Stretch the leg long. And pull it in. Ha! Stretch it long. Pull it in. Ha! And one last time. Lengthen. And strengthen. And then walk out your dog. Pressing the heels towards the mat. And then walk your feet up to find your forward fold. And then inhale, squeeze your tummy muscles. Come up to what's called halfway. Push your hands into your shins. Push your shins into your hands. Let the crown of the hand reach forward. And then let it go. And work your rag doll. Drawing figure eights, five eights on the, the mat, or grabbing elbows and just hanging out here. Let the spine extend. Let gravity help you. Then let your hands go, and then walk your hands up your body through your thumbs, through your paw, mountain pose. So roll the shoulders up and back and down. Really deep 
strong through your arms and hands. Really feel the ground with your feet. Your tummy is strong. Now let me say, your mountain is stable. Your mountain is solid. Alright, next up we're going to work the um, 23rd Psalm with the mat. We've worked the 23rd Psalm in the chair uh, when we were practicing near the cornfield uh, and we used Sally Lloyd Webber's um, Jesus Storybook Bible version. We'll try to work both versions in today and um, the first one uh, will go like this. Alright, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me by the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, 
protect me. Thou prepares the table for me and the presence of my enemy. Anoints my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is my shepherd, and I am his little lamb. He feeds me, he guides me, he looks after me. I have everything I need. Inside my heart is very quiet. As quiet as lying still in soft green grass in a meadow by a little stream. Even when I walk through the dark, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid. Because my shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me. He keeps me safe. He rescues me. He makes me strong and brave. He is getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me. Everything I ever dreamed of. He fills my heart so full of happiness I can't hold it all inside. Wherever I go, I know God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. We'll go to. Now that we're nice and warm, we're ready to work our body. So um, always giggle and laugh because at this point I feel like I have been working. What do you mean? <laughs> but it means that our body is warm. We're ready to stretch and strengthen. And hopefully we're ready to work in where we won't hurt ourselves, right? Our muscles are nice and warm and good to go. So we'll begin by taking our toes on the railroad tracks, all right? Uh, and work our triangle posture first, all right? So toe out to the side and then put whatever space that you desire between your um, heel and um, ankle. So I like to extend it just a bit, all right? You know you're welcome to use blocks, chairs, uh, walls, whatever you need to help you work a pose. Um, and we're gonna reach the arms out like a cross in the capital letter T. Relax the shoulders, hip away from the pointy toe. Breathe in, and then exhale and push out over the pointy toe and roll arm down and arm high. Now you can go lower to this pose, um, but I find that I'm really working my core strength whenever I keep it up just a bit, right? If I use a block or if I get to the floor, a lot of times I'm just kind of dumping into it and I'm not strengthening here. But, but explore. I do know that when I reach down lower, I feel like I'm opening my chest um, there and, and getting that work done. So you work the pose what you need today. Your gaze can be high with the hand that's reaching to the sky or your gaze can be low depending on how that feels with your neck. Breathing in, breathing out. You got this. You are strong. You are taking care of yourself so you can do the work that God has for you to do this day. Now from triangle, bend the knee and then reach into warrior two. So no feet changing, just you're bending the forward leg. Your shoulders start to creep up to your ears. Roll them back down where they're designed to be. Take the palms to the sky and reach. Hang on, you got this. You can do hard things. I'm still wearing my earrings. I can do hard things. Reach the hand that's forward, up and over. Reverse the warrior. Also, we call this peaceful warrior. Again, we're getting a side body stretch here. This back hand, remember in our chair yoga series we explored, you can leave it right there dangling as decoration, or you can start to take it to the back of the body or reach it around to that forward hip 
if you want to work on opening that shoulder. Continue to breathe. The breathing helps you fuel the work you're, work you're doing. All right, let the bind go if you are working on the bind. And then come on back down and through for side angle. So side angle is where we're going to prop on this thigh and reach high with the opposite hand. Or we're going to reach forward or again we can go down low. All right. However you would like to get that done today. Side angle pose. <sighs> breathing in, breathing out. And then from side angle toes, pose, keep your toes connected to the earth. And then reach up and find the warrior. And then collapse your warrior toes to the long side of the mat. And breathe your wings up. And breathe them down. And breathe your wings up. And breathe them down. All right, we're going to find our star pose from here. So our legs are just right. Or you may want to take your toes out to the side. Uh, uh, edges of the mat, the corners of the mat. All right, and then reach the hands, extend them again. If your shoulders start to eat up the space between your shoulders and your ears, relax them consciously. Slide the shoulder blades down the back. All right, you can do hard things, but you don't need to scrunch your shoulders to get them done or clench your chicken cheeks or your jaws. Right, you can put the work where it needs to be. All right, now we're going to rotate and do our twinkle, twinkle little star. So we're going to slide over here, twisting the star, and then we'll fold the star. So reach forward and down, extending high and pushing through the ground. Now the hand that's high, reach it over your ear, and then reach it back up. Tickle the sky, and then squeeze your tummy muscles, press the feet into the ground, and come up to the twisted star and full star here and we'll shine so we'll sing as we work this uh, there's three uh, verses here kind of with twinkle twinkle so that'll get us even we'll do this uh, uh, on two sides right both sides of the body here we go twinkle twinkle little star how I want what you are up above the world so high like a diamond in the sky twinkle twinkle little star how I want what you are. Woohoo! Alright, we'll set up for triangle on the opposite side. So take your um, other toe pointy to the side, right? This toe stays to the long side of the mat. Again, work the space that you need between your feet. All sides are not created equal. So whatever you need on this side may or may not look like what you did on the opposite side. Arms extend like you're crossing the capital letter T. Hip kicks away to create space as you reach forward on the breath in. And exhale and roll down and roll up. And work your triangle on this side of the body. You are strong. You are got this. You are trying new things. You are preparing for whatever it is you need to do next. Because your mind will be clear. You'll be better able to problem solve. Your body will be strong. Your heart will be open to possibilities. It'll be flexible and ready to do whatever it is that comes up next. All right, from triangle pose, we're going to bend the knee and find warrior two posture. Relax in the shoulders, smile on your face. Warriors are passionate. Warriors are strong. Warriors are brave. Warriors are willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done. And you are a warrior. 
One of my favorite verses during the pandemic has been Psalm 29, 11. The Lord strengthens his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Yes. And it's that peace that passes all understanding that comforts us and helps us through. All right, from Warrior 2, reverse the warrior. So the arm goes high, the back arm dangles for decoration. Or remember, you can work on shoulder opening by working it around to the forward thigh. Breathing in, breathing out. Don't forget to breathe. If you ever feel the breath get jagged or ragged, you know to back up. So maybe if you were trying the bind and it's too much, uh, back it up, or um, I struggle with my knee on this side, like it's a challenge for me to work it. So sometimes it doesn't bend as deeply because I'm, I'm, my breath is so sharing with me that I need to back it up a little bit. You listen to what your body is saying to you today. And from reverse warrior, we go into side angle. So you find the warrior two, and then you rest the um, forearm on thigh and reach the opposite arm high. Or remember, you can take that hand out across the long side of the mat and work the core strength in that way. When you hold your postures, if you want to think about holding them for three breaths or five breaths or eight breaths or ten breaths, or you can even set a little timer and try to hold things for 30 seconds, half a minute, whatever feels right uh, is the right thing to do. But do listen to your breath. So you know you need to push hard, but you don't want to push yourself over that edge, right? You want to work on the edge. That's where the strength builds, the confidence builds when you work the edge. All right, warrior two posture, and then make your way back to the toes, to the long side of the mat. It's gonna be a little creative for Miss Brown with that knee. <laughs> All right, and then we'll take the hands to the hips, and the head reaches out over the long side of the mat for a wide-legged forward fold. So you can reach down if that feels good to a block or to the ground. You can extend the feet out to the side and even go lower to the elbows if that feels good. So find where you want to work this stretch today. I'm going to come back up to the hand. Keep breathing. Make your breathing loud and proud. Breath in. Breath out. And then walk your hands over to one side. Maybe reaching for that ankle with the opposite hand. But just go into that direction. And then walk your hands over to your other side. Now this is when you might want to throw your tie around your ankle too, right? If it would help to um, uh, give a little stretch in that way. We come back to center and then heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, the feet together and bend one knee and reach that hand to the ground as you extend the opposite arm to the sky and lengthen that leg. hand that's high comes low, the leg that's straight bends, the leg straightens, and you work the opposite side. Alright, the hand that's high comes low, both legs bend so you can reach
reach down to the ground. And then very slowly, because you've been upside down for a while. So we don't want to get dizzy as the blood flow back down out of the head. All right, you got that? You okay? Take a moment if you're a little lightheaded and roll the shoulders up and back and down as you settle back into being vertical. <sighs> Smile on your face. Taking care of you by working some yoga together today. And roll the shoulders up and back and down and over. And then for grins and giggles, if you'd like to try that where we do one arm up and over, one arm back. Try a few spins and then try it in the opposite direction. <laughs> that really works out the hemispheres of our brain and makes them coordinate. Another great um, way to get both hemispheres kicked in and firing up and communicating is the cross crawl. So that is where you take a hand on one side of the body and the knee of the other. So like when we were doing our cheetah and you can um, tap right again we're crossing the midline so that's when we get this good work of um, hemisphere communication accomplished all right do one more set and we'll work on balance next all right so if you are inside the house and you prefer to be off your mat for um the balance sometimes that helps me to really feel the ground better uh, but we're going to work on a tree pose because we've got a great tree back here behind us. Um, I've noticed sometimes it's growing out of my head, right, in some of the shots. <laughs> All right, so we're going to feel the ground with the foot, and I'm going to try to find a place that feels where I can really hold on to it. And remember, lots of options. Heel to the top of the foot. Uh, have it kickstand out, come up to the calf muscle, or you can go to the thigh muscle. You're just never pressing on the knee joint. Palms together, maybe. Branches high, maybe. And breathe. Branches that are high come low, the legs that are up come down, the down leg shakes off. It was working hard, that's good stuff. And then set up shop for the other side. So find a way to feel really connected to the ground. And you notice I have my um, shoes off when I practice yoga. Sometimes, I think mostly with chair yoga, I left my shoes on. Um, but when you have your shoes off, you can really connect with the ground. So it's your preference. Um, sometimes I really feel more comfortable in my shoes. So it, I figure it's better to yoga uh, with the shoes on than no yoga at all. So you do what you feel most comfortable. I know a lot of you like to wear your socks and socks are oh, no problem, except do pay attention if you can buy the socks with the grippies um, on the bottom. That's, that's better for slippy sliding. You don't want to slide. That would, you know, we don't want to get hurt. All right, so, but if you've ever wondered. All right, so find the way you want to work this on this side of the body. You can go to the calf muscle. You can go up to the thigh muscle. I'm going to try it on this side. If you choose, you may grow the branches. Branches that are high come low, the legs that are up come down, and you shake out the standing leg. It's working very hard. And we're ready to now to head to the mat. So make your way to um, uh, your seated position on the mat. Okay, I thought we'd work a boat position since Scott's I got all his boats over here. He's also got boats. Over 
here. He's also got boats in the garage and boats in the boat house. <laughs> um, and he's been selling some boats uh, to folks. I think that's one of the um, activities that's up right now during the pandemic. People can be outside. People can get on the water. And so he's been... Um, uh, unloading some stock that he's had that uh, so if you need a boat or if you would like just to borrow a boat Scott is always ready to get somebody um, in the water enjoying um, canoeing uh, he's got closed deck canoes open canoes I think he might even have some kayaks he's got some sea, sea um, kayaks or canoes as well so uh, if you want to know more about boats he's your man all right and it's a great way to take care of yourself right it's a, uh, it's a quiet um, uh, outdoor activity and it's good stuff for your heart and your head and your whole body so let's make a boat with our bodies today remember you can uh, do lots of options lots of ways to modify it it works for you um, here's one boat here's another all right options you have or you can take the hands to the back of the knees and lift the legs right and find your boat high your boat low and then, if you'd like to, you can take away the arms and you can lift them. And then some folks can even demo the fact that those legs can be long. But I lose the integrity in my back when I give that a whirl. And so I'm going to hang out right here in my boat. All right, welcome to Wibble Wobble. It's you getting stronger. And then lower your boat and give it a squeeze to relax the muscles in the tummy. And we'll work our boat one more time. Whichever boat you want to float, you get her done, okay? I'm going to go back to here. And I'm going to give it a try one more time. My boat is very shaky today, but that's okay. Keep paddling. Good stuff. Give it a squeeze. All right, we'll work a, um, a seated tree next. So take one leg long and one leg out to the side. And I will just turn my um, tree a little bit on my mat so maybe that shows up a little better. Um, the leg that's long and strong, that uh, foot is toes to the sky. So the foot is still flexed. And you're going to reach up. Standing, right? And then we're going to fold over that long leg, reaching towards that foot. Whatever you got is good. So we're bending the back forward and backwards. We've done side stretching on both sides and we've done extending. So the last thing we'll need to do is a twist. So we will be working on that next. As gravity works, let it, let it, let it do it. Let it just do its thing, right? Just let your body get deeper into the stretch with each breath. And if you do have a tie or a belt or a, a bathrobe strap, you can hold it around if you're um, not able to, um, if your stretch is more here, that that's works, that's good, okay? Breathe in and grow the body tall, okay? And then now we're going to press this knee into the ground and that heel and this hand of this Bentley is going to come back and we're going to do what's called stargazer pose. I'm always uh, having trouble explaining this one to you, so I hope that I've got this uh, a little bit better explained today. So the weight goes into the foot, the weight goes into the knee, the weight goes into the hand, and the other arm stretches as you lift. Hey! And lower back down. All right, now bring up this bent knee and the legs that's long, you're gonna wrap that arm around and here comes a twist. Reach up and over and back and down. And look behind you. Keep breathing as you grow tall on the in breath and on the out breath, maybe you get a little millimeter more to the twist. And that is gonna be the sixth and seventh ways to work our spine, good stuff.
one more breath. And then let it go. Alright, come back around, feet together, wibble wobble. Now you just want to work your um, uh, tree on the other side, so you don't need to move your body. But I am going to twist around just so I can keep my gaze towards you as we work. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Denise Austin. Does anybody know that fitness um, video queen? <laughs> but she would always say, your spine is your lifeline. Um, and she has a lot of other fun little phrases that I used to, used to watch her videos uh, uh, more. And I, I always liked her little catchphrases. But that was when your spine is your lifeline. So in other words, you've got to take care of your back, right? Everything connects and uh, um, coordinates with your back. All right. So breathing up with your seated tree on this side we're going to reach forward and again let gravity work here and let it pull you down just gently no no uh, forcing no um urgency to it just let it just drip right over it just did drop yourself up nice and tall and we're going to stargazer pose all right so the bent knee take that hand behind you all right so the weight goes in the hand the knee and the long legged foot all right and you reach the opposite hand high as you stretch to the heavens breathing in breathing out our twist on this side so the knee goes tall the long legged hand goes around for a hug around the knee and you reach up and over and back and down now as you work anything that we do together in in this video uh, class and you have a question please let me know what's uh, what your question is we'll work our best to figure out how to solve any problem that you encounter as you work through just like we would have if we were been practicing together and remember, if I don't know the answer, I'm going to try to do my best to find the answer. I'll ask some questions. I'm so looking forward to the yoga therapy training that starts in August. Hopefully, I'll be learning a lot of good information to help us all be healthier and stronger and work through whatever we bring to the mat on whatever day. twist and give yourself a little shimmy shake all right and we'll get ready to rest so this is the part of the class that is my favorite this is the part of the class where you can um, uh, lay out on your mat or you can um, put your legs up the wall however it is that you would like to take some quiet time I'm going to read to you from a storybook today uh, about uh, how the little girl puts the monster to sleep under the bed uh, and then she Uh, and as we think about self-care, we remember that our rest is very, very important uh, to self-care and that even um, if you're staying up later or, you know, the, maybe your schedule's a little different these days, you still want to get your proper rest in. So it's got some bedtime um, routines at the end of that story. I'm going to read you that uh, piece of the book uh, today. And I'm also going to let you know I've got a great uh, zippity bee bobble uh, and bangle about uh, resting and evening routines.
routines. Um, so I'll highlight that too uh, with this um, practice so that if you would, are interested in that, uh, it's a great way to remember a small yoga practice you can do as you get ready to rest and chill at bedtime. So get yourself comfy and we'll get ready to rest. So find your way to your back body, make any adjustments in your clothing, uh, feel the part of your body that connects with the ground, and let your breathing be easy and maybe close your eyes. Breath in, breath out. When you need to put your monster to bed, remember step one. Pour your monster a nice big glass of calming, crunchy, oozy bug juice slimed with ooey gooey snail trails. No monster can resist this, and maybe you can't either. Go ahead, take a sip. Step two, give your monster an ice cold, shiver inducing bath to relax him, and make sure to scrub behind his ears with mud soap. Step three, brush your monster's fangs until they are at their smelly, rotten best. And don't forget to floss. Step four, help your monster find his favorite squishy, squashy, can't go to bed without it toy. Put all the other monster toys in your parents' bed. They will appreciate your thoughtfulness. Step five, read the freakiest, creepiest, scary story from your bookshelf, screaming where appropriate, and watch your monster's eyelids droop. If your monster asks for one more story, shout no way, and then get ready for step six. In the key of screech, sing shock goodbye, monster, and listen to those gigantic monster snores, along with the snores of your family and maybe even the whole block. Congratulations, you've done it. Your monster has officially gone to bed. You are the master of monsters, the captain of creatures, the baroness of boogeymen. You're so good, everyone in the neighborhood will start asking you to help with their monsters. And now that you've got your monster to bed, We'll think about the bedtime routine charms uh, and what they represent on the Zippity Bee uh, bangle for bedtime routines. There's a clock charm to remind you that you need 9 to 11 hours of rest each night. And that getting into a sleep schedule is very helpful. Trying to go to bed around the same time each evening. The apple charm, remember, reminds us to pay attention to food and to drink. Don't go to bed hungry, but don't go to bed stuffed. Avoid caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine to get good night's rest. The light bulb charm on the bracelet represents creating a restful environment. Limit your screen time before bedtime and make sure your room is nice and dark. The brain charm it represents managing your worries and your stress. And your yoga is a wonderful way to manage your worries and your stress. The butterfly charm is there to help you remember to do a little yoga. Folding the body uh, soothes a ramped up nervous system. There is also an I love yoga charm on the bracelet to not only represent managing your stress and worries through yoga, but also to engage in physical activity during the day so that your body is tired at night. And finally, a spinning charm. If you're still spinning, legs at the wall is another helpful yoga pose. Invite movement back into your body by wiggling toes and fingers, rolling ankles and your wrists, rocking your head side to side. 
Your body may would appreciate a full body stretch. So stretch the body nice and long. Or maybe pull those knees into the chest and gently rock the back body to and fro, back and forth. Roll on over to your favorite side, make a little pillow with your hands, and take several breaths in the side body and side lying child's pose. And when you're ready, push yourself up to a tall seated position. Cross the legs, big breath in, big breath out. And stretch the arms wide as you reach with the breath in overhead, palms together, thumbs to the heart. Big breath in, reach the arms out up overhead and breath out as you reach the palms together, thumbs to the heart. And one final breath in, reach high. Exhale, thumbs to the heart, palms together. I hope you've enjoyed this opportunity to practice self-care and enjoy the opportunity to share yoga with you. And even though we can't be face-to-face, -face, I'm so thankful we still can get her done. Namaste, yogi friends.